right, joined in studio now, State Representative Adam Niemer with me on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. It is uh, interesting to always sit back and watch all the stuff that happens at the Illinois State House, which is where I find myself uh, full-time outside of the part-time gig of hosting the morning show. Uh, so it's always good when we can uh, talk to people from throughout the day, but even better when we can have them in studio. And uh, Adam joins us now, Representative. Thanks for taking time with us this morning. Uh, last night, you were up how late until uh, with this five-hour-long committee? It was about 9 o'clock. Yep. About 9 o'clock? Yeah. Geez. So, okay. Um, if people don't know, right now we're in a time where, yes, they're passing some legislation. We'll touch on a few of those. Uh, but uh, they're also you know, holding committees, delving into budget requests, looking at how much you're going to spend at one agency over the other. They may be touching on various pieces of legislation about possible, you know, legalizing ground sparklers or prohibiting the declawing of cats, a whole host of other things. But you were part of a um, what was the committee? It was the uh, the the committee on uh, government services and accountability. Yeah, it or? was uh, appropriations general services. So in appropriations general services, every uh, agency, the directors uh, come to us with their budget and their budget requests. And last night uh, we had a, a few come on. But the interesting uh, portion of that, where usually these five hour marathon sessions are uh, are, are pretty mundane, they're, they can be kind of boring. We're going over, over financials and discussing uh, budget related issues with each department. Uh, but last night, the uh, director of commerce and economic opportunity came in uh, to present her budget. And I noticed that I'd seen her name before. Uh, she was the uh, director of uh, IDES, the uh, employment security. So she sat down for uh, for DCEO, and of course, we haven't seen IDES uh, uh, in front of us yet. We don't know when we're going to see them. They say they don't have the numbers. We're looking at possibly $2 billion in federal fra- fraud. We don't know what it looks like on the state side. They had some very, very serious issues at IDES, so I chose to ask her questions about IDES. So it got a little heated. Uh, she couldn't answer my questions. and Despite I just, uh, that she was head of the agency th- for the bulk of of the pandemic when they had delays, they had fraud, they had a whole host of other things. Uh, she she did say, you know, hey, they stood up seven different programs during the pandemic, and it was a, uh, you know, they were the pandemic first responders for the economy. Uh, but, I mean, here we are three years after the governor said, no, you can't have indoor dining, and then you had the, uh, the, the statewide stay-at-home order. Shouldn't we get to the bottom of where the tax dollars went? Yes, absolutely. And, and I, for the record, I made sure that folks were made aware of the bureaucratic shuffle, the fact that she was moved in this January from IDES to another agency. And I, I asked her, quite frankly, I said, to the to the normal person outside looking in, it looks like you were moved from one failed agency so you wouldn't have accountability to another agency so you could do the bureaucratic shuffle and not have to talk about what happened to IDES. Well, if you if, if anybody watched the committee last night, it got a little lively after I made that comment. Well, and uh, the chair of the committee, um, Fred Crespo, he did say that uh, they'll have IDES in at some time. They were supposed to come, but they didn't have everything together, so... Now they're unclear as to when you guys are actually going to be able to talk about the specifics uh, with uh, the Illinois Department of Employment Security. Uh, Talk about just briefly uh, some of the other things in that five hour committee last night. The inspector general was there. You had other uh, offices looking for funds. Uh, What's some of the big takeaways? Uh, Some of the big takeaways is is the fact that folks are continually asking for for additional funds. And we saw the governor's budget proposal, $50 billion. And the appropriations general services, it really gives us, us an opportunity Republicans to talk to these department heads and ask the questions that we want to ask because, quite frankly, the the budget process where we don't have a seat at the table. Uh, we go through these appropriations general services meetings and then we don't hear anything. And then 11:55, last day of session, we actually see the budget. So it does give us an opportunity uh, to ask questions of these department heads. Uh, we had Executive Inspector General in uh, who under, handles complaints for the governor's office, and their complaints have uh, skyrocketed. We talked about whether or not they have the manpower to facilitate the need of those complaints in their cycle times. Again, it's a, it's not a very uh, energetic uh, committee to be on, but it's also very important because it gives Republicans that one opportunity to question these department heads. State Representative Adam Niemer with us here on WMAY talking about uh, some of the latest happening at the Illinois State House. Um, you, you're also on the Audit Commission, uh, which is a bipartisan group. They look at uh, audits from the inspector, uh, from the Auditor General, rather. Uh, sometimes they're two year audits. Sometimes you guys can even uh, pass resolutions, as happened this week, uh, looking at uh, DHS's oversight of uh, community integrated living arrangement homes. Um, talk about uh, the importance of this commission on getting to some of these questions that are still looming. Well, again, it's an opportunity uh, for Republicans such as myself to 
be put in front of these agencies to have to have these discussions because you know we look at legislative audit commission and we look at these audits that are placed in front of us and we see a lot of repeat offenses and there's very little will in Springfield to actually change the status quo or actually fix things. For example, uh, Illinois Department of Natural Resources had 33 findings, 22 of which were repeated. And unfortunately, in my opinion was that the, that the director did not uh, give us a great reason for why those will not be repeated again. There wasn't a set action plan saying the next audit, I'm looking not at 22, but maybe 16, 15, 14, and here's my action plan. Um, it seemed kind of open in the air. We're going to try to fix this. Here's kind of what we're maybe working on. Um, I'm new to the agency. Boy, folks, we hear that all the time. When somebody says I'm new to the agency, and it's funny because this stuff always happens this time of year, right, be right before Legislative Audit Commission uh, and Approach General Services, we have all new directors. So everybody's saying, well, that happened before I was here, so there's no accountability for me. And then guess what? I have a feeling that next year we're going to be seeing new directors, and the year after that we're going to be seeing new directors. Uh, so it's always – it's a perpetual uh, situation where nobody wants any accountability and nobody wants to actually fix things. So it gives me a chance to say, what are your goals? What's your accountability? Let's treat this like a business. You're making $160,000 a year. Let's get with the program. Uh, Representative, we're at this time where, a lot, again, a lot of committee hearings, a lot of discussion about overviews and, and budgets and whatnot. Um, very little is actually passing the House at the moment, but there were several bills that passed yesterday. Uh, on third reading, you had, uh, I think, the most contentious ones. One of them uh, dealt with prohibiting, uh, and again, this is just passing the House, so it's now on to the Senate with these bills before they could go on to the governor's desk. But uh, you've got uh, a measure that would prohibit the uh, the use of uh, certain seeds treated with pesticides in the production of ethanol. Interesting. I uh, didn't really realize that was a major issue, but th that passed the House, uh, mostly along party lines. Another one, apparently somebody wants to let you guys conduct marriages. Is that right? Yes. It's rather than tackling the specific issues of this state, it looks like I can uh, I can marry people now. Now, obviously, like you said, it has gotten through the House and needs to get through the Senate to the governor's uh, desk. But yeah, it looks like uh, looks like folks in the General Assembly, if we want to marry, people, I, I'm not qualified. I voted no. I am not qualified for that, and nor should I be uh, qualified to to marry individuals. But yeah, I guess I can just go out anytime, marry anybody. And I guess it's all good. So, yeah, the, the, that measure did pass the House. It not just allows for members of the General Assembly to uh, conduct marriages, but uh, also uh, constitutional officers like the governor, lieutenant governor, treasurer, comptroller, and so on. Uh, Representative Adam Niemer with us. Um, finally here, just y your reaction to where we're at with the latest litigation against the state's gun ban. January 10th, the governor signed this. Uh, you know, A week later, lawsuits filed in state and federal courts. You've got the state courts uh, taking the uh, the the Illinois Supreme Court taking the uh, the Macon County case, uh, but there's a, an apparent conflict there. The governor brushing that off as right wing conspiracy or right wing concern. Your thoughts about that perceived conflict? Well, how is it a right wing concern or a conspiracy when he donates millions of dollars to the Supreme Court justices and then presents a case in front of them that has him as a, as a as a lead uh, defendant in that case? It seems. Obvious to me. I mean, we we, we kind of know which it's five. It's a five to two court. You know, uh, Democrats control the House. They control the Senate. They control the governor's office and they also control the Supreme Court. So to say that this really large check that I slid across the table to you to keep your seat, the Supreme Court. But don't 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 worry about that. There's nothing to see here. There's uh, these aren't the droids you're looking for, so to speak. So um, it's a situation where we kind of know the outcome of this before it gets started, but that doesn't mean that we're going to, you know, stop pushing for our to, to uphold our constitutional rights and our Second Amendment. Uh, and ultimately, I think the federal courts will side with us. Um, you know, these these cases that have been put forth to the federal courts. There's seven or eight different states that have been sued in federal court, um, where we have in the Bruin case in New York, we have some very uh, good uh, grounds to stand on with overturning this in, in the federal courts. And I, I do believe that's where we're going to see uh, the action. And, and the, the Democrats, they just took it way too far with, with this particular bill. Uh, and I think uh, ultimately in the in the Supreme Court and the federal courts, we're going to see the action. But yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous to see these massive campaign contributions and then for the governor just to brush it off and say, no, there's nothing to see here. Well, just briefly, um, what's the answer to stemming gun violence? Because that, that seems to be the impetus of 
prohibiting access to commonly owned firearms is while well, these commonly owned firearms are being used in mass shootings. How do we stem this this type of violence, uh, not just these lone wolves, but but also the violence in Chicago, for instance? It's it's education. Uh, it's mental health for these these children. I mean, you look at the last two years uh, with the governor's COVID mitigation orders, shutting down schools, masking our kids, uh, you know, putting them outside of uh, of classrooms and of social situations. And a lot of kids, there's there's a serious mental health issue there. Uh, so really, it starts it starts in the homes. It starts with our parents raising our children properly. It starts with uh, mental health for our kids growing up. It starts, um, you know, in our schools, teaching our kids, um, you know, to, to, to be interactive, to, to, to be critical thinkers, because, you know, that, that goes into a whole nother issue on um, numbers coming back from our schools on reading and writing. And we keep, that's, that's a whole nother issue to talk about. But really, it starts at home. It starts with the mental health uh, for these children, because ultimately, the ones that are committing these acts are um, Let's just be completely honest. It, when this happens, nobody is completely surprised at this individual. It, it, if somebody says yes, we we thought he had he or she had had issues, and this this act was was committed. Uh, so I think it's really getting getting to the heart of what we're what we're dealing with on the mental health issue in the state of Illinois, and just passing legislation that just prohibits individuals from from buying these firearms. These these criminals, they're going to still get these firearms. These individuals are still going to find a way to get these firearms uh, to commit these horrible, horrible acts. Uh, so just by limiting the availability of the firearm, so you can pass a bill, everybody feels good, they go about their business. It does not tackle the actual root cause of gun violence in the state of Illinois. State Representative Adam Niemer, greatly appreciated. We'll talk again soon, all right? Thank you, Greg. It is Springfield's Morning News on 92. 92-